spring is here. Just keep telling yourself that over and over. <clears throat> and I'm sure it'll happen. Thank you for uh, letting me come this week. I apologize for my wife and children who are not here. Uh, they do uh, SAT tests with a little Christian school next to our house every year. And uh, they spread it over a two-week period. And so for two weeks every year, uh, Liz and the kids are home at the house. And you think, well, that's, that's a pain in the neck. That's a big deal for them um, because we're not home very much. And as my daughter says, they, they get to go over to the school every morning and sit there for testing. For them, it's a big thrill. You know, I never thought of it as a big thrill when I was a kid. But for them, it's a big deal. And they get to be what my, what my daughter calls normal kids for a two-week period. And so that's where they are. Uh, finishing that up this week. So they send their greetings and uh, really this is one of those places that they wish they could be and they hated to see it fall on this week. But it is good to be here this morning and I'm looking forward to what the Lord is going to do in our midst over the next several days. So you come and by all means bring somebody with you. Amen. Invite somebody to come with you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Just, just invite them to come. And the only way you can be sure they won't is if you don't. So you ask them, all right? If you found Psalm 100, would you stay with me as we read the Word of God this morning? Look at Psalm 100, verse number 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this beautiful day. Lord, thank you that we can be in your house this morning. Open your word. Allow your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. God, we ask that you would do that today. If there would be one here lost without Christ this morning, Lord, we pray that today would be the day of salvation for them. Well, thank you and praise you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Look again at, at our text here, this little song. Look how it starts out. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with, what's the next word? Gladness. Now, it's easy to say, serve the Lord with gladness, and it's much harder to serve the Lord with gladness. It's easy to say, hard to do, because of the world that we live in. I, I will confess to you this morning that I am a news junkie. I am. I, I read the news, I watch the news, I listen to the news. The news pops up on my phone without me even looking for it. Boom, there it is. Whatever horrible tragedy befell someone somewhere in the world today, there it is on my phone so I can know about it. You know what all that will do for you? It will depress you. That's what it will do. Because it's just bad, 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 more bad, bad we're looking for tomorrow, bad we didn't know about yesterday, bad that's going on all the time. They don't stop and have a happy news hour. <laughs> Nobody watches that. Nobody cares about that. It's bad stuff and if there's no bad stuff no, local, they'll go statewide. If there's no bad stuff statewide, they'll go to neighboring states and then they'll go national, then they'll go international trying to find something bad that, that will depress you and discourage you and all the rest and we in our, inundate ourselves with that stuff every day, all day long and then we show up for church and serve the Lord with gladness. Praise God. I, I don't feel glad. I don't feel glad. If you knew what I know, you wouldn't be glad. If you knew what happened last night under the cover of darkness, you wouldn't be glad. If you knew what they're doing to us right now, but we can't even see it, you wouldn't be glad. If you knew what's coming tomorrow, you wouldn't be glad. And God says, serve the Lord with gladness. How do you do that? How in the world do you get through all that gunk and serve the Lord with gladness? Well, most of the time our problem is that we are focused on the immediate instead of the eternal. That's right. And the immediate can get ugly. 
Oh, sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's sad, sometimes it's just downright ugly. And if we focus on that, we're just going to be ping-ponging all over the place right. and never be stable in our Christian life. We need to focus on that which is eternal. Look at verse number three. You know what verse number three is? A great eternal truth of life. Right. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Can I sum that whole verse up for you? In, in one little statement, you might want to write this down. You might want to tweet this later in the day. I don't know why, but you might, if you're into tweeting, help yourself. God is God, and you're not. Did you get that? God is God and you're not. Some folks really struggle with that through life. Right. They really do. Most, most of our problems come when we start thinking we're in charge of everything and we know how to yeah. fix everything and we yeah. know what to do and we go about doing it and we make a mess and then we think, oh no, everything's a disaster. When we need to remember God is God. Yeah. We're not. You see our place in that verse? We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Do you know what sheep worry about? Nothing. They worry about nothing. They really don't. They're, they're the most ignorant and helpless of creatures. <laughs> they are. And they follow the shepherd. The shepherd takes them to food. The shepherd takes them to water. The shepherd protects them. The shepherd takes care of their bumps and bruises. He does everything that needs to be done. All they have to do is follow the shepherd and their life is wonderful. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? God says that's who we are. He's God. We're not. We're just His people and the sheep of His pasture. What a wonderful thing. But then look down a little further. Verse 4. Enter into His gates with, what's the next word? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Hmm. Now that'll help you get your focus in the right place to Being thankful. Thanksgiving and into his courts with, what's the next one? Praise. Praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And then look at verse 5. For the Lord is good. That is a great eternal truth. Right. It doesn't matter where you are, yeah. what the circumstances in your life are. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world or, or anywhere else. That statement is always true no matter when or where it is said. The Lord is good. That never changes. Right. Never changes. Look at the rest of verse 5. His mercy is everlasting. Another great eternal truth. His mercy is everlasting. The same mercy that I received when I got saved all those years ago is with me. The Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It's never going to leave me and it'll be there for all eternity. That's right. Amen. What a wonderful truth. You see, our focus is, is on the immediate and we forget about the eternal, the real things that never change. And look at the last... Last spring, and his truth endureth to all generations. That's wonderful, isn't it? What God said thousands of years ago is still true today and will still be settled in eternity in the thousands and millions of years yet to come. His truth endureth to all generations. But we focus in on, oh, a bad thing happened yesterday. Well, that didn't change any of the great eternal truths that God has given us. That didn't change who we are in Jesus Christ. It didn't change anything. And so what we need to learn to do is come into His gates, enter in His gates with thanksgiving. Amen. If we'll get our focus on those things God has done and is doing and will yet do, then we can enter His gates with thanksgiving and we can serve Him with gladness. Yeah. You can be thankful for what God has already done Boy. in your life. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, you can. Uh, all you have to do is look around. You, you can be thankful for the things God has already done. You can be thankful for your family. Yes, sir. Yep. I just lost some of you right there. I can tell there was like a cloud that went over you, over your face. And, and you're thinking, well, you don't know my family. I, I'm thankful for a lot, but you don't know my family. That's all right. You can be thankful for your family, really. Amen. You say, but they're 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 all messed up. Well, sure. Can I tell you something about your family? I, I do know a little bit about your family. I do. Let me just tell you. They're a dysfunctional mess. They are. <laughs> Don't look so shocked. The preacher didn't tell me ahead of time. Uh, I already knew that. You know how I know that? Are you ready for this? They're all a dysfunctional mess. Right. There's no other kind. 
They say, oh, well, well, I know this perfect family, and, and that's what I want my family to be like, that perfect family. You know why you think they're the perfect family? You don't know them well enough yet. Right. <laughs> you get to know them better. Go hang out at their place and stay a couple days longer than you should. <laughs> you know, there's a point where you should go. Just stay a couple more days. And you know what you'll find out in those couple of days? Yeah. They're a dysfunctional mess. You're right. Their dysfunction may be in different areas than yours, but they're a dysfunctional mess. There's no other kind. There's no other kind. You want to find dysfunctional families? Yeah. Go right here. I mean, the book starts with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Eve goes off and does the one thing she's not supposed to do. And then she goes and finds everybody she can and drags them in there with her. <laughs> you are awake this morning. That's good. And then, and then sin enters the picture. And, and then along come the children. Cain and Abel. And then you got murder in the first. That's a dysfunctional mess. Right from the start. And, and it just keeps going that way. You say, well, how about, how about Abraham, the friend of God? Oh, you don't want to go there. No, that's not going to help you. Abraham, you remember Abraham. Abraham and Sarah went down into Egypt. And Abraham told everybody Sarah was his sister instead of his wife. <sighs> Nearly married her off. If God hadn't shown up in the middle of the night and said, stop, it would have got ugly in a hurry. Yeah. Now, I, I hope when we get to heaven, we can see the replay of all the big stories. You know, Daniel and the lion's den and Jonah and Noah. And I hope we get to watch all that stuff. But I also want to see the in-between stuff that's not in the Bible. Yeah. You know, those conversations. I mean, there's hundreds of years worth of conversations there between Abraham and Sarah that we don't get to hear. There's decades of talk that we miss out on. Don't you think, listen, don't tell me that's not dysfunctional. Take your wife down there and try to, try to marry her off. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. Take, take, a little, take a little trip into Detroit tomorrow and, and, and auction your wife off and marry her off. to some, See how well that goes for you. That's not going to go well. As a matter of fact, that's the kind of thing your wife's not going to forget. She's going to remember that for decades down the line. Hey, can you imagine Abraham and Sarah? I just, I envision one day Abraham saying, Sarah, I believe we should do this. And Sarah looking at him and saying, really? You think we should do that? You're the guy who tried to marry me off in Egypt. Oh, that had to come up at least 50 or 60 times over the years. That's not the kind of thing that just goes away in the next chapter. That haunts you for the rest of your life. Listen, it, does, it doesn't get any better after that. You don't even want to look at Jacob's family. Trust me, you don't. They're ugly. Oh, it's horrible. It's terrible. It's an awful mess. That's because they're people. And people are still people. Just like those people. We still do the same stupid things. That's right. And we're just as messed up now as we were then. Thank God that he loves messed up people. <laughs> because if God didn't love messed up people, there'd be no hope for us. Amen? Be thankful for your family. See, God put you right into the family you needed to be in. I know. You may say, well, you don't understand. There were some bad things in our family. Please don't blame that on God. God didn't do that to you. But we live in a wicked, sin-cursed world because of our own sin and our own wickedness. Right, right. But listen, if you'll get your focus in the right place, God can even use those bad things that occur to be a blessing to somebody else down the road. You're right. If you'll get your focus on the, internal, on the eternal instead of the immediate problem, God can even use somebody else's foolishness to be a blessing down the road. That's how wonderful our God is. You can be thankful for your family. You can be thankful for your friends. Look around you. You know who these people in this room are? These are your friends. So most of my friends are somewhere else. Well, I hate for people to say that because these are your real friends. You see, these are the ones going the same direction you're going. These are the ones who want to serve God like you want to serve God. You have a common purpose and a common goal. And by the way, these are the ones that are going to be there when something awful happens in your life. They're, they're going to be there. Thank God for your friends. 
Thank God for your country. That's right, sir. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, I, I know it's not perfect. <laughs> it's far from perfect. It's a, it's a disaster. It really is. It's a mess. And, and it's probably far worse than we ever imagined it is. It probably is. But you know what? It's still the best place in all the world. Amen. There's no better place. Amen. People are still trying to get into this one. Yeah. Yeah. They're still trying to get out of other ones. Still the best country in all the world. We still have the freedom to serve God and preach the word Amen. of God and, yeah. and, and do what we want to do. Thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Now listen, your family, your friends, your nation, those are all things that are just physical and material. And if we can be thankful over just the physical, material things God has already done for us, yes. just think about the spiritual things God yeah. has already done for us. When I was seven years old in vacation Bible school in Soldotna, Alaska, at Soldotna Baptist Church, I was sitting on a, on a little wooden bench on an uneven concrete floor in the basement. And the, the basement was packed out. There were All the benches were full of kids and we're all sitting there wobbling on the benches. And a guy got up and he preached the gospel to us. He preached to us. And he gave an invitation. And I shot my hand up in the air and I said, I need to be saved. And a nice lady took the Bible and she took me out and, and went through the word of God with me and led me to the Lord. And I trusted Jesus Christ as Savior that day. That was way back there because I'm old as dirt now. I, yeah, I am. 53. I'm nearly dead. I just don't know it yet. And that was all those decades back there. And you know what? If not another decent thing ever happened in my life, I can be thankful because of what happened back there. If not another good thing ever happened, that's enough because that takes care of all eternity. Thank God for it. But listen, if I'm sitting around moping and, and grumping and complaining, well, all I need to do is look back at what God has already done and I have no reason to be anything but thankful. No reason for anything else. Listen, I, I can look back at that and you know what happened long before I ever showed up as a seven-year-old boy to hear the gospel? Long before that, the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation yeah. of the world. Long before I ever showed up needing salvation, God had already planned a way for me to get saved. Isn't that amazing? That was done centuries before I showed up. And by the time I got there, the blood of Jesus Christ had already been shed to cover my sin. And all I had to do was reach out and accept what he had already done. What a blessing. Something that happened all those centuries ago was sitting there ready and waiting for me when I showed up. And can I tell you, if you're here today without Jesus Christ as Savior, it's waiting for you today. It's already done. The work of your salvation has already been accomplished on the cross of Calvary. All you have to do is accept what Jesus Christ has already done. What a wonderful thing. That's already finished. That's way, way, way back there. Already done and taken care of. I'm so thankful for redemption through the blood of Christ. For the freedom that we have in Christ. For the mercy that's extended to us. What a wonderful thing. Listen, some people get nervous when you mention that we have freedom in Christ. Because of all the idiots running around today. I shouldn't say that on Sunday morning, should I? I'll smile at you because you can't get mad at me. I'll smile at you. Today, people have taken the freedom we have in Christ and turned it into license to sin. Right. That's an abomination. That's right. perversion. I thank God I'm free in the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, I don't serve God because I have to. I serve God because I want to. I am free to serve Him. I'm free to honor Him. I'm free to live for Him. I'm not under the bondage of religion or anything else. I am free in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for it. That was taken care of a long time ago. I'm so glad. Listen, you can be thankful for what's already done. You can be thankful for what God is doing right now. Did you know God is at work in your life right now? He is. I promise you He is. As a matter of fact, I know He is because you are breathing. And when God is done with you, that'll stop. <laughs> that'll be the end of it. There will be no more breathing. 
He said, well, you know, it's not really God that, that keeps me alive. It's, it, it's all these physical processes and, and, and the heart only beats because of electrical impulses. And Okay, fine, good. But God has to start those electrical impulses or nothing happens. God has to do that. Man can't do that. God has to do it. So, well, uh, wherever it came from, the electrical impulses are there. Makes the heart beat. Okay. Well, what if, what if it stops? You say, well, well, they, they can take me and, and put the paddles on me and zap me and I will come back. Well, that's wonderful. You know, they can, it's a really amazing. They can do that sometimes several times. Really, it's amazing. But there will be a day when they can slap the paddles on you, right. turn on the defibrillator as high as it'll go, shoot the whole power plant through your body till you're nothing but a french fry. Yep. And there's nothing there. You know why? Because it's not just electrical impulses, it's the hand of God. That's right. And when God says that's enough, that's enough. And there's not a thing in the world you can do to change that. Not a thing in the world. God is at work in your life right now because he's sustaining you. He's giving you life and he's giving you breath. And I know, I know what you're thinking. Well, that's not really what I'm talking about because God's not answering my prayer. He's not giving me what I want. Is God answering somebody else's prayer? Have you, have you heard anybody give a testimony of something God has done in their life? How he's answered their prayers, how he's provided for them, how he's done something for them. Then let me tell you what to do. Don't, don't get upset when God is working in somebody else's life and you don't see him working in yours. Instead, when you see God answering somebody else's prayer and working in somebody else's life, you go rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Get all excited for them. Because you know what that reminds you? That God is not done. And if God can work for him, God can work for you. Amen. And if God can do things in her life, God can do things in her life. And it might just not be my turn yet. So I'm going to rejoice with everybody that I see God answering their prayers and just trust that he's going to get around to me when it's the right time. You see, you can be thankful for what God is doing right now. He's giving you life and breath, and He's sustaining you every single day. In Psalm 37, verse 25, the psalmist David said, I have been young, and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He said, I, I've never seen God forsake one of His own. And by the way, He's not about to start now. You can be thankful for what's already done. For what's already taken care of in the past. You can be thankful for what God is doing right now. You can be thankful for what's coming down the road. You may say, well, that's the problem. I don't know what's coming down the road. And it looks like it might be bad. Yes. Yes. I told you, I, I'm a news junkie. I watch, I listen, I read. I get it popped up on my phone. I already know that the world is is going to implode. <laughs> Cheer up, it's going to get worse. <laughs> I, I already know that. I just don't want to be the last one on the day that it happens. I don't want to be the last one to find out. That's why I watch every day. <laughs> yes, there's bad stuff coming down the road. You said, well, well, the rapture's coming and we'll get out of here before anything bad happens. Yes, the rapture is coming. But God didn't promise nothing bad would happen before that. Right. We've just lived very sheltered lives in that regard in our nation. Thank God for it. We've had religious freedom for all, as long as any of us can ever remember. But it's not that way everywhere. As a matter of fact, right now, right now, today, in our world, there are lots of places where you can't do what we're doing right now. You can't pick up your Bible and open it and read it in public. You can't talk to somebody about Jesus. You can't sing a song about Jesus. You can't do any of the things we've done here this morning without them coming in and dragging you away and throwing you in prison or cutting your head off or burning you alive or stoning you out in the backyard. And that's happening now, today, every day in our world. We're just somehow sheltered from that. And don't think that that could never happen to us. Because it could. There are plenty of other places where they thought it would never happen to them as well. 
And we have no guarantee that there won't be some nastiness before the rapture comes. No promise at all. You say, well, that's horrible. And that's terrible. No, no, no. Because there's good stuff coming down the road. And I'm not talking about heaven. You know what God has in store for you? Well, maybe, maybe some tragedy befalls you and comes in your life or some terrible thing happens. Listen, turn to Philippians chapter 4 if you would. Philippians chapter 4. I want you to see this passage in the context of, of what's coming in the future. We were in chapter 3 in Sunday school. That was a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Look at chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now look at verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Have you noticed that verse 7 is not in the present tense? Verse 7 is future. It's future. God is saying, you be careful for nothing. You don't worry yourself about all the stuff that's going on. You let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. And he says in verse 7, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's right. When the world is falling apart and nobody knows what to do and everybody's scared and anxious and running a million ways, you know what God has for His children? Peace that passeth all understanding. Right. That's something the world doesn't have. That's something we have to look forward to. No matter what happens, peace that passeth all understanding. Have you ever been to the funeral of a lost person? They were lost. The family was lost. Most of the people in the, in the auditorium were lost. And as the preacher, you can't stand there and say, well, he's, he's in heaven. You can't lie to them. You can't do that. The best you can do is say you don't have to end up the way he ended up and tell them about Jesus. And I've been in those settings and I have seen the fear and the despair and the sorrow and the wailing and the crying and people almost crawling into the casket because they knew they would never see that person again. Horrible. It's awful. By the same token, I've been to the funeral of saved people. Where they were saved, the family was saved, and they were just as sad, but there was no despair. There was none of that other stuff. And, and there were tears running down the eyes of the mother sitting on the second row with a little smile on her face and her hand stuck up in the air because she knew that she would see her son again. Yeah. It's a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. You know what it is? It's a peace that passeth all understanding. There's no explanation for it outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ. The world doesn't understand it. The world doesn't have it. And God says, don't you worry about anything. You be careful for nothing. You just, you let your request be made known with thanksgiving. And I have something for you. I have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. I'm glad there's good to come. But you know what? When all this is over, we still get heaven. <laughs> now that's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Yes, sir. We get heaven for all eternity. That's, that's wonderful. All because of that day way back there when I trusted Christ as Savior as a seven-year-old boy. All those years in the past, because of that day, I can look forward to an eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. We were in Alaska in July this past year. Over the years, we've always gone in December. <laughs> That's not the best time to go to Alaska. But my family is in Alaska. And, and we would spend a week before Christmas with Liz's father in Washington. And then we'd fly to Alaska and we'd spend Christmas with my mother and my family. And, and then we'd have meetings in Alaska. And we've just always done that. It's the way it's always been for the last, well, for the last 19 years we've done that. This past year, we didn't go for Christmas. It was the first time. And the reason we didn't is because mom is, uh, she's 88. She'll be 89 in uh, October. And mom has dementia. And, and it's been a slow process for her. And we noticed 
a couple of years ago when we were there for Christmas that she didn't really know that it was Christmas. And she knew the tree was sitting there and the lights were on and all that. And, and every once in a while she'd ask when we were going to put it away and, and all that. And she wasn't sure why it was in the living room. Or she'd say, when are we going to open presents? And we'd have to point to the big pile of presents beside her chair over here and the big pile of wrapping paper over there and say, don't you remember? We did it last night and, and yesterday and, and we already did that. And, She'd say, when's everybody coming over? Well, they came over yesterday. And, and she just, her short-term memory is gone. Long-term is fine. You can sit and talk to her about any subject you want, and she can carry on a wonderful conversation about anything under the sun. She just doesn't know 10 minutes from now that you were even there, let alone she talked about it. It's just strange what the brain does. And we realized that she didn't know that it was Christmas, and so, there's no point in showing up on a particular day if she doesn't know it's that day. And she doesn't even know later in that day that it's that day. So there's just no point in doing that. So we went in July and told her it was Christmas. <laughs> no, 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 we didn't do that. But, but we decided we'd go up in the summer. And that would give us a little more flexibility on some of the places we went to preach and some of the meetings and all that without being hampered by the weather and the storms and all that. So last year we were there, the last couple weeks of July and last couple, first couple weeks of August, we'll do the same thing this year. And we got to, we got to mom's house that night and, and we had flown, you know, through the night and then spent the night in the hotel in Anchorage and then we drove down to mom's place and, and we didn't tell her we were coming ahead of time because there's no reason to do that. It just confuses things. So I, I let my brothers and my sister know ahead of time, of course, and, and then I just called mom when we were about 10 minutes from the house. I said, hey, Mom, we're here. We're coming to the house. And she said, oh, really? <laughs> and she said, I'll be ready. We got there. She was ready. She was waiting for us. And, and she was so excited we were there. And we just had a wonderful, wonderful time. And we were sitting in the living room. Mom was in her chair. I was on a couch to the right of her. Liz was to my right. Hope and David were in a couch on the other side of the room. And, and we were just sitting there and just chatting and talking and uh, just having a wonderful time and she got yet another chihuahua puppy and so we're playing with the puppy and, and just having a wonderful time. And then my wife got a, a joke on her phone. Now, I don't think her phone is saved. Mine, <laughs> mine gets news stories and hers gets jokes. Something's not right there and, and it popped up and she shared the joke with us. And, and it wasn't a good joke. But we laughed because that's what you're supposed to do. So, so we laughed a little. It, it was, a, it was a, what I call a groaner. You know, it was just one of those mm, kind of jokes. And I would tell it to you, except that it wasn't that good a joke. <laughs> he wants to hear the joke. So, uh, why, why does a cow have hooves instead of feet? Well, because they lack toes. <laughs> See what I mean? It's, it's not a good joke. It's, just, it's, it's a farming science joke. It's just not a, it's not a good combination. And, and so she told the joke, and, we, <laughs> and then we, and we looked over at Mom, and Mom, you'd have to know Mom, she's not a laugh-out-loud kind of person. Uh, she's, she's sitting there in the chair shaking. She's laughing so hard she can't contain herself. Tears are running out of her eyes and she's shaking and her face is red. And, and, and she's blowing her nose and she, she's just, she's completely out of control. And she's laughing. So we're laughing at her and we're all laughing. And so she told the joke again and we laughed again and on and on it went. And finally everything calmed down. And, and my mother started to fish around on the table next to her chair looking for something. We said, Mom, what are you looking for? And she said, uh, I'm trying to find my phone numbers. We said, who are you trying to call? And she said, I want to call Mark, that's me, and tell him the joke. <laughs> but I can't find his phone number. And so I, I was a little taken aback by that. And so I'm just sitting there, and, and my wife's trying to be a blessing. So she said, well, I have his number. <laughs> I'm not looking at my wife. I thought, I thought maybe the rapture happened, and I was gone. <laughs> And, and, and so she said, would you give me the number? And Liz said, sure. So mom got out a piece of paper and a pencil. Liz gave her my number. Mom wrote it down. And then she picked up the house phone and called me. 
Well, I had my phone right there on my belt. So I picked it up to answer it, and I picked up a pillow so she couldn't see. I was talking to her. And, and, and she called me, and, and she said, she said, Mark and Liz are here. And Liz just told me a joke, and I want to tell you the joke, but I can't remember it. <laughs> And so, so Liz wanted to be a blessing. So she, she told her the joke again. And Mom laughed. And, and then she told me the joke over the phone. And I laughed. And, and then we talked a while because we were on the phone. And, and then we said goodbye. And I hung up and I put the pillow down. And Mom looked right over at me. And she said, I think there were people there because I heard voices. In there. <laughs> and we laughed and laughed. We laughed for an hour and we just laughed and laughed. And you say, well, that, that's horrible. No, listen, she was genuinely happy. She was as happy as she could be. And, and we were happy and, and we were enjoying each other and we were enjoying that moment. And I'll just be honest with you, we're gonna enjoy all of those that we can because we know we won't have those. Those will go away at some point. But we have them now and so we're going to enjoy them. The sad part about the whole thing is that my kids don't get to know Grandma the way she really was. They don't. They don't, they don't see her the way she always did things. They don't get to see her start cooking in November and cook all the way through January and every day piles of new stuff show up on the table just out of the blue. And, and that's, that's the way I grew up. That's the way it always was. They don't get to see, they don't get to see her jump on the snowmobile and head off into the, into the wilderness with her friends and ride the snowmobile. I spent the formative years of my life hanging on for dear life to the back seat of that snowmobile as we took off through the woods. And she loved to do that. Last time she did that, she was 65 years old. And they went 30 miles up into a, into a cabin in the woods for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> 30 miles up, 30 miles back. That was her last ride. After that, she said it, it was not so good on her back. <laughs> They'll never experience that. They'll never get to go get the buckets and the shovels and head down to the, to the beach and dig clams like we used to. When I was a kid, we, we had these razor clams this long and this wide. And she would do amazing things with those fresh clams. They don't, they don't get to see it. They don't even, they don't even get to see her play the organ at church like she did all her life. Because she, she doesn't go anymore because she, uh, she's afraid to go out in public. She's just at that point. And if I call her this afternoon and talk to her, she'll, she'll tell me she was in church and it was wonderful today. She'll tell me there were a lot of people there. She'll tell me that Brother Balwell preached a good message today. Because she thinks she was there. <laughs> They'll never see her do that. But you know, this life is so short. She's 88. I told her she needs to go to 100 because it's only 12 more years. And that'll go by in a hurry. I don't know if she'll last 12 more years. I, I have no idea. But I do know that whether she lasts 5 or 12 or 20, this life is short. But what comes next is forever. You're right. And they'll never get to know her the way she was here. But they'll get to know her there. And they'll get to know her with no memory issues and no physical problems and right. none of the rest of it that make this life difficult. Right. They'll get to know her perfect. And they'll get to spend all of eternity together. Yes, sir. That's well worth it. Amen. That's well worth it. I, I choose to focus on the eternal because that's the important stuff. That's the important stuff. Amen. When my mom was 12 years old in Sunday school in Brainerd, Minnesota, she trusted Jesus Christ to save her. By the way, she could tell you about that today if you ask her. She remembers that so well. She can tell you where she was. She can tell you the address of the church and how long it took them to walk there. And she got saved there when she was 12 years old. Because of that day, everything's going to be okay. 
That's right. I'm glad for that. Because when I was seven years old, I trusted Christ. Everything's going to be good for all eternity. Both of my kids have trusted Christ as Savior. Someday we're going to all be together for eternity. Because we can look back and be thankful for something hap that happened back there, we can look ahead and be thankful for what is yet to come. That's good. Most people that can't be thankful for what's coming don't have anything to look back on. Can I just ask you a question this morning? Can you look back on the day when you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I'm not talking about the day you got baptized or the day you joined the church or, or the day you turned over a new leaf. Is there a day when you trusted Jesus Christ as Savior? If so, then you can look ahead with thanksgiving. And you can serve the Lord with <coughs> gladness. Amen. Yep. Gladness. If not, I'll just be honest with you. If you can't look back on a day like that, what's coming is bad. It's worse than you ever imagined. And for you, it will end in a lake of fire for all eternity. That's what the Bible says. You'd better have a day when you trust in Christ as Savior. And if you can't look back on one, why don't you make today that day? And then 10 years from now, you can look back on that Sunday in April of 2017 and say, because of that day, everything changed. Let's stay together and pray. Definitely.